Oh, welcome back, Algebra Express. We are in Roxwald 4.4, rolling on to 4.4. This is the real zeros of polynomial functions. <clears throat> and so we have kind of talked about this, but they say the following are equivalent. So if we get a factor of x minus k, So that's where they're getting that x equals k is the zero. So my factor looks like x minus the zero. The zero looks like just that number. So there is a difference of a basically a negative sign happening here, right? Okay. Assuming the leading coefficient is one or minus one, find a factored form of this following polynomial. So the zeros of f, so the first thing we want to pick off is the zeros. Right. But I'm looking along here for my zeros are the same thing as saying the x-intercept. It's like saying where is my y zero or my function value of y. And so x equals a minus 2. A zero is in here. And I have 1. So this is giving me three zeros, minus two, zero, and one, my leading coefficient. So this is what we we're talking about previously with in behavior. If I'm looking like this, it's going down over here, it's going up over here. This is the sort of in behavior of this thing. So I'm thinking, is this odd or even? Does it look like a line or a parabola? This looks a lot more like a line. So this is an odd function and hopefully we're getting three zeros. So that kind of syncs up with thinking it's odd. Um, and so we are now asking ourselves, is this positive or negative? Is it going up or down? Is it an up line or is it a down line? It is definitely an up line. There is a positive one leading coefficient on this thing. Okay. So if you want to put the positive one leading coefficient, you can, but we really don't need it. We're multiplying by one. That's my leading coefficient. Now I want to put in my three factors. I have three zeros. There should be three factors. So I'm probably going to do this. I'm probably going to do this only once before I just start jumping to it. But I want to do x minus and minus 2. I'm going to do x minus 0. And I want to do x minus 1. I can clean this up just a little bit. So like I said, I don't really need to put that one there. Minus and minus, I'm probably just going to jump to my double negatives with x plus 2. From now on, I'm just going to swap it. X minus zero is really just a factor of x here. And I have an x minus one. So this is my, fun my function. And so you might notice another thing is have three factors, this should be a cubic. Uh, sometimes if there's just an X by itself, the book or other sources might like to write it out in front. So they might swap things around. We can swap around these factors in any sort of order. They're all being multiplied, so it doesn't matter what order we write things in. So that is the commutative property there, right? How they arrive there, how they commute. Find a factor form of that thing below. And the leading coefficient may not be one or minus one. It could be something else, what they're saying here. So we're going to have to figure this out on something other than in behavior, probably. So let's look at our zeros of f. That's the first thing. And a two. The leading coefficient, uh, we could say from the end behavior, you could probably tell me this is an even function with negative leading coefficient, right? So we could say it's probably negative. But we're gonna have to do a little bit of figuring to figure out what this thing is.
So we definitely know it's negative. And I'm not really sure why they try to make you right. Well, I guess, I guess that makes sense. Okay. We have some kind of f of x. I want to write out the things that I know from my zeros. I want to throw in x plus 3 is one of the factors, and x plus 1. Well, I got an extra set of parentheses there. Ignore that. And I have a x minus 1 and an x minus 2. All right, so I have, ignore this. I have my one, two, three, four factors here. The other thing I need is some sort of leading coefficient. I don't know what it is. Typically for leading coefficient, we use the, the letter A. So now I wanna think about this and if I don't know what my leading coefficient is, I have a Y variable, I have an X variable, and I have an A variable. So I need to plug in something for everything but A. So what I'm saying is I need another X and a Y. So I want to pick an X and a Y out of here. If you, okay. So if you go and pick one of these things. So if you pick one of your zeros, I guess we could do that right quick. It's going to be very similar for each zero. What we're going to get is like minus three comma zero. I'm going to put in zero for my y. I'm going to do a. I'm going to get like a minus three plus three here. And I'm going to get minus three plus one. And I'm going to get some other stuff over here. I'm going to stop right here because right away, if you plug in a zero, this is zero. What I'm going to end up with is getting something like zero equals zero. And so I wanted to solve for A, and I got this. So this is not giving me A. So if you plug in a zero, you're not going to be able to solve for A. It's not going to give you an equation. We're going to do zero times A at some point, and it's going to end up not solving for the leading coefficient. So in order to solve for your leading coefficient, you really need to pick a point that is not a zero. So we need to find another point that we haven't used already. I think that looks like the only other place. I was trying to look at this earlier. Yeah, that's the only other place I can even see that it even hits directly on an even like X and Y value, right? Everywhere else it's kind of in between. It doesn't hit the crosshairs any. Well, maybe this might be another. Maybe you could do minus two, four, or do what? Zero minus two. So I think you could do probably those two points, but right away, if they're going to give me something with a zero in it, that's usually one of the easier things to plug in. So if I think about this point, this is the point zero minus two. So what is that saying? That is saying my F is in minus two. And A is in I, and these are all zero plus three, zero plus one, and these zero minus one. And so, like I was saying, if I do zero, these things take real quick. I'm doing three times one times minus one times minus two. So overall, let's look at this. There are two negatives. This is going to become positive. This whole thing should be positive. So we're in three times what? Two basically. Six a is a minus two. A over here is a minus two. So if I want to solve for a, I'm dividing both sides by six. So minus two is equal to a. Six times one times and then now I'm doing minus one third. A is a negative one third. So I did this work. So the process to this is to find your zeros, write out your equation with your zeros. If we need to solve for a, we plug in another point that is not a zero. So, and then we have our solution for a is a minus one third. We know our f of x looks like, we can rewrite our equation. It looks like a minus one third. And I have my four zeros, I need a negative one third. 
All righty then. Is the next page? I believe the next page is. Yes, I want to go to Desmos next. Let's go look at Desmos. So in the next page, they talk about this thing called multiplicities or multiplicities of zero. Let's get us on. Okay, so this, if I want to think about this function, I think this is maybe one of the easier ways to think about this thing. If I start with this function x minus three squared, and you could do just x squared if you really wanted to. It would give you a point about the origin. I just didn't want to put a whole bunch of zeros in one equation. I wanted to keep the numbers kind of different. So maybe you could distinguish one thing from another. Um, so what I did was I did x minus three. So if we think about graph shifts, all this is is just the x squared function moved to the right three. So if we're thinking about where this guy is hitting the axis, it's going to hit the axis at three comma zero. So this is a parabola. We're expecting two solutions, but we see one of them. Okay, so what's happening? And we could absolutely, if we wanted to, right? If we wanted to solve this thing, like this, we could solve this thing for zero. And the easiest way to solve this is the square root property. So x minus three equals the plus or minus the square root of zero. The square root of zero is zero. So what we're getting is like three plus or minus zero for our two solutions. And so this is the thing where we add and subtract zero. So what's happening is this thing is repeating itself. We're getting two of the same solution. So this thing is happening twice is what's happening. So things that look like, and this is what they're getting at, things that look sort of like a parabola, right, are going to have multiple solutions. They're going to have at least two, or they could have more that, and be even, right? So if we think about all the even functions like x to the fourth, x to the sixth, x to the eighth, they all look very sort of similar to a parabola. They look they look flatter around here, but that's just because it's not zoomed in enough, right? If you zoom in enough, you can see they actually, they all actually only hit it at one sort of point. Okay. So if it looks like a parabola, if it hits it and it turns around, if it looks like the vert, if it looks like a sort of like vertex sort of thing hitting the, the axis, we're going to have a multiplicity that is even. So it is at least two. And in this class, if I'm being honest, I think for the most part, we try to keep things lower. We're probably gonna just have two of them in there, but it could be more. And we might have to figure that out. And then the other thing is what if it's odd? So we know the cubic, the basic cubic looks like that little squiggly, little saddling along the axis, right? It looks like it almost flattens, but if we really, really zoom in, it never actually flattens completely. It's still going up at every single point in here. So this, I moved it to the right four. So X minus four moves it to the right four. So this has three solutions of X equals four is what this is saying. So if we go back and solve this X minus four, right? To the third, we can expand the notation if you really wanted to. The square root property, I guess. Is that means we're getting this solution or x equals four, we're getting this thing three times. It has a multiplicity of three. So going back, uh, what we're saying is if it looks like this sort of cubic sort of thing happening right along your axis, what that's what's ha actually happening is you're getting multiplicities of odd numbers. There are more than there's more than one zero there, so it's either three, five, right? If we look at all these, they kind of do that sort of saddling thing. They just look like they're more and more flat. But there we go. It could be more, but it's at least three, right? And for the most part, I think we'll probably keep it probably around three, probably won't go much past, maybe to the next one. But let's stop, stop, okay. That's basically all they're trying to say with this next page, with this multiplicity. And you might notice this is cubic, right? And so right away, you're like probably thinking about your factors and this factor. It is positive cubic. And one of my factors is x minus three. Another one is x minus 
0.5. And if I did this, you might notice this is only a 1, 2. I only got two x's there. And I need three x's there. So where's that other one coming from? This vertex. Around. So this is giving me a multiplicity. It is giving me a multiplicity of juice juice too. Okay. Similarly with this one, if we want to think about this one, I have an x plus one and an x minus two. So it's always the opposite sign of the zero. The zero is a minus one. The factor looks like x plus one. If the zero is two, the factor looks like x minus two. That's what they were saying on the previous page. Now we look at this thing. We know this thing is definitely not a square, right? Uh, it is not a square function. We're only getting two. And so this one right here, this is the picture that they want you to look at. This looks like a two bit going through the axis. So this looks like the vertex hitting it and turning around. This one looks like the cubic. So this one is a multiplicity of at least three, right? Plus one multiplicity of at least three. And that's what they're trying to get at with this multiplicity example. If it looks like a square hitting it and turning around, at its vertex, it's going to be twice, at least, it could be two, four, six, eight, right? <clears throat> Same thing, if it like, looks like a cubic hitting the axis, it's going to be at least three, could be three, five, seven, nine. It could be a larger odd number or a larger even. But there are multiple zeros happening at things that look like those things. My leading coefficient here. And we're, now we're assuming the leading coefficient is minus one or one. So it's probably not, <laughs> but we're just going to assume it is. A lot of times we'll just assume it is because it's easier than going back and solving for the zero like we did, or for solving for the leading coefficient like we did in the previous page, right? It took a little bit of work. Uh, so the leading coefficient here, does this look like a line or a parabola? I think the end behavior looks like a parabola. And if we go up and up, my leading is positive. My zero. Yeesh, what scale are they using? I have a problem counting that thing, and that's where you're like freaking out. Don't freak out. Three. Okay. Uh, And now we want to talk about multiplicity. So if this is going through and it's going through, it's not doing anything. Straight through. That is just the multiplicity of one using time and time again. This guy. Next. The three. It is going straight through. There's nothing funky. Funky. There's nothing funky happening there. Except for the way I say funky, it was kind of funky. But, uh, and the one that's going to one, what about this thing? That is not going all the way through. That is hitting it and turning around. That is an even multiplicity, at least degree two. And now we want to write this equation so it looks like x plus two. And if you really want to, you can write it to the multiplicity. You typically don't write that. Right. X minus one is next thing four. Probably my eye. X minus three. And we can write the multiplicity of three if we wanted to. So typically, we don't write multiplicities of one because we're just raising it to the it's the same thing as saying we have it one time. To the first power. Typically, the first power, we don't write the next one, right? It's just like, that's what we need. But the idea here is this guy. 
factor absolutely does have a square on it, right? So you do got to account for that square that is on that guy. All right. One. Last example. Find all real zeros in their multiplicities. Use the zeros and the leading coefficient to write a factored form of f. Assume, assuming the leading coefficient is minus 1 or 1. Okay. So I think this is student activity, so I'm hoping you're attempting these on your own at first. So give this one a good look over before I start doing it. Uh, what is my leading coefficient? The thing I'm going to start off with is the thing first on my list. It's either one or minus one. Here, my leading coefficient is going down. It looks like a negative parabola. I know it's an even degree function. My zero is x equals a minus three. My zero here is x equals zero. So x plus three is this one. You could do x minus zero, I guess, there. And now we want to talk about multiplicity. So this one, I do believe this one is happening only once. It's going straight through. It's not doing anything funky about that axis, right? A little weird through the axis. So it's doing that cubic sort of looking shape. At least the cube. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit. I have a minus one. I have an x plus three there that I'm going to write x on. When I do this, x minus zero is just x and I'm cubing this. So something that I might do is this x cubed. They might leave this as a negative and say negative x cubed. Plus three. I might clean it up just a little bit. Okay. So that is the final. Uh, problem that we're working through. Uh, hope to see you soon and take care.